Cockpit, one of my favorite parts of aircraft modeling. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my workflow. Everything from priming, airbrushing the base coat, adding shadows and highlights, dry brushing, chipping, and then assembling. And there will be some additional smaller steps on the way to the finished cockpit. That sounds like much to do, so let's start. I have to mention it again, but Mr. Surfacer 1500 in black is my number one primer with Tamiya lacquer thinner, the one with the yellow cap. I thin it in a cup without measuring the exact ratio, but it sprays very well with my harder and steam bag airbrush equipped with a 0.4 needle and about 1 bar or 15 psi if it's thin like skimmed milk. I airbrush it in several layers not fluting the surface and I try to fill every little corner so that there aren't any unpainted spots. The primer is really pitch black and the surface is semi-matte. You can feel that the texture is ideal for the upcoming base coat, but the color will grip to the primer. As base coat for the cockpit I used the RLM66 Schwarz-Grau from Mr. Hobby. Again I thinned it with Tamiya lacquer thinner, like skimmed milk. Some guys gonna hate me, but I mixed the color in the airbrush cup with the pipette and the brush. But I never had an issue and it's faster. So let's add the semi-glossy base coat. As you can see, there's not much difference between the primer and the base coat. The base coat is so dark that you have to add some contrast to accentuate and make the details visible. To increase the contrast and make the details more visible, I add highlights and shadows with the airbrush and I use dry brushing. So the next steps are essential in my workflow. But first, check out these nice cockpit details from Tamiya. I prefer to work with these than to cover them with pre-colored PE parts. First I add the shadows. I mix a black dark brown from these colors and thin them down to almost the consistency of ink. Then I took a 0.15 needle and used my Harder and Steenbeck Infinity for this task. I added shadows under every protruding detail and in every corner. The shading hasn't to be very accurate. There are more layers which will adjust it. Some stronger and some lighter shades create a nice randomness. But as a guideline, I tried to make the shadows stronger in deep corners and down in the cockpit. For the highlights, I mix a very light grey with these two colors. I spray the highlights over every plane surface and in the center of panels, creating automatically a sort of a gradient with the shadows. Here you can see the difference between the fuselage halves. Again, it doesn't have to be accurate, some randomness makes it more interesting to look at.
As the colors for the shadows and highlights are very thinned down, you can work in several layers. But because they are so thin, you have to handle your airbrush trigger with care. As you can see, as I pulled too much on the trigger, it overflowed the surface in certain spots. Now it is time to pick out the colored parts of the cockpit. I paint them with Vallejo colors and a good brush. To make it easier I add some drops of paint retarder from Tamiya. Painting these details is pretty straightforward. Experience and a steady hand are your friends. I'm sure there are many details which I didn't paint or didn't paint correctly. Now the next important step in adding contrast is dry brushing. I use oil paints, this time light grey from Abteilung 502 and a soft white brush. Just take some color onto the brush and wipe almost everything off on a towel. Now you can rub the brush over the details, accentuating them. As you can see, the color builds up slowly. Dry brushing works best on matte surfaces. As this base coat and the highlights and shadows are semi-gloss, it worked too. But as mentioned, it's easier on a matte, more gripping surface. The dry brushing technique is essential for me in tiny spaces like cockpits, because it picks really out the details and adds some contrast, which is important in a scale model. In my opinion, if you don't work with contrast in small scales, many nice details get lost. You could also pick out the details with a brush and some lighter color, but I think it's faster with the dry brushing method and it adds some wear to the plain surfaces, they look more used. For example, this nice instrument panel really starts to live when it's dry brushed. Then, as a last step, finishing with the contrast and before chipping, you could add a wash like this one from Tamiya or from thinned oil colors. I just added a light oil wash, which I didn't capture on camera. This Prismacolor pencil is just perfect for chipping. You can work very precise with the pointed tip and the silver color of the chips just looks great. The base coats and the dry brushing made a semi-gloss surface which work ok with this pencil. It would be better if the surface would be matte, same as with the dry brushing technique. I tried to keep the scratches as small and precise as possible. 
with a hard and pointy tip of the Prismacolor pencil, it is much easier to do that than with a brush and acrylic paint. Perhaps you noted that the colors of the video changed a bit. That's because I bought this new desk lamp, which is great. It makes color correction much easier. Perhaps I'll do a walk around of my workspace when I got more subscribers and if you're interested. So if you like what you see and want to check out more about modeling aircrafts and tanks, subscribe now and click the notification bell. I upload up to twice a week so you don't miss any updates and you support the channel much appreciated. Thank you. The Tamiya decal for the instrument panel is too thick to use. So I got the generic instrument dial decals from Airscale, which I already used before in an Edwatch kit and I liked them a lot. But this time the sizes between the Tamiya instrument panel and the decals were too different. So I added only a few dials and painted the rest in black. I hope these decals will fit better in the next instrument panel I build. So let's close up this cockpit. Perhaps you saw the finished wheelbase when I was assembling the fuselage. So at the same time working on the cockpit, I also finished the wheelbase, landing gear and wheels. If you don't want to miss this video or the next episode about painting this awkward aircraft, consider subscribing and activating the notification bell now. The fit of the plastic parts are great, there are some minor gaps which we have to fill before we can continue with the next steps. So join me in the next episode which is already in production and will be uploaded in the next few days. In the meantime leave some feedback in the comments section and check out the other video I uploaded about the cockpit of the Focke-Wolf 90 in the other series on my channel. So enjoy your weekend and keep on modeling!